On this episode of China Uncensored, how to protect yourself from Chinese hackers. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Now, if you're watching this, there's a chance your computer has been hacked by China. It's been over a month since it came out that hackers, very likely from China, stole personal information on 22 million Americans when they breached the U.S. Office of Personnel Management. I still can't believe it. That's one in 15 Americans. Now, a lot of folks might not have a really strong grasp of how the internet works. It's a series of tubes. So when you hear about China hacking into the U.S. government's computers, you might think it went down like this. They're through the fourth firewall. One left to lead access to our mainframe. But in reality, it went down something like this. It only took one government agency that had not taken the simple step of updating its server software to open the door to an unprecedented and alarming cyber attack believed to be by the government of China. And while the Chinese military may be the world's biggest single group of coordinated hackers threatening Americans, don't worry. There's also the Russians and tons of others out there as well. That's why I've put together this list of seven things you need to know to protect yourself from hackers. Number seven, update your software. But it's such a pain. You have to stop whatever you were doing, wait for the updates to download, then for the computer to restart. Come on, even the government doesn't bother. And it allowed China to hack files on 22 million of us. Okay, so there might be some merit to those updates. It's actually a constant battle for programmers to keep up with the hackers because every new operating system or software version can have new vulnerabilities. It's like in war. You make bulletproof armor, they make armor-piercing bullets. You build a tank, they build a jet. You ride a triceratops, they ride. Number six, make a good passphrase. Did I say passphrase? Yes. I meant passphrase, not password. A hacker's computer can make a trillion guesses a second. That's according to Edward Snowden. For somebody who has a very common eight character password, uh, it can literally take less than a second for a computer to go through the possibilities and pull that password out. That's why Snowden suggests using passphrases instead. Like his example, Margaret Thatcher is 110% sexy. Certainly no human could ever guess that. 75% maybe, but 110%? Fortunately, even if a computer can brute force uncover your eight character password in one second, it would take that same computer thousands of years to guess a 16 character passphrase. As long as it's not an obvious one, such as, Chris is a sexy hunk. This Wired article recommends using passphrases of random words like Potato lampshade bike run. Obviously don't use that one. If you Google passphrase generator, you'll find some sites that will help you come up with some ideas. Number five, don't just open any email link or attachment. Hackers use a technique called spear phishing. You get an email that looks real. Maybe it's your bank saying there was a security breach and you need to click on a link to a website that will ask you to enter your account information. Or it's an email from a friend, but the writing and grammar are different from how they usually speak. What could that attachment do? Take over the computer, lock the computer, and then demand a ransom payment before it would unlock, uh, steal images from your system of your children, or your, you know, uh, steal your banking information, take your entire life. Good rule of thumb, don't open any attachment or click on any link in an email that is strange for any reason. If you're not sure, call your bank or your friend and ask if they sent that to you. Number four, be selective about what you post online. When you were a kid, your parents probably told you not to talk to strangers. Because is it really a good idea to tell a stranger where you live, your phone number, what food you like, who your friends are? Oh wait, that's Facebook. Even if you only accept friend requests from your actual friends, their accounts could still be compromised. So only post what you're okay with hackers seeing. Number three, know your USB. Viruses and malware can be easily transmitted through USB drives, aka 
thumb drives. Several years ago, an Iranian double agent was able to sabotage an entire Iranian nuclear facility with the Stuxnet computer worm that was installed on a single USB stick. More recently, security researchers from Security Research Labs created a malware called Bad USB that affects a USB drive's firmware. That means even if you wipe the drive and your IT guy says it's clean, it can still contain malware. And that malware can seize control of your PC, install corrupted programs with backdoor access, and even redirect your internet traffic. So another good rule of thumb, don't leave your thumb drives lying around. Don't lend them out, and don't let them touch a computer you don't absolutely trust. This isn't limited to thumb drives. Any USB device is at risk. The bad USB malware worked on any USB device, keyboards, mites, smartphones. So really, be careful what you connect to your computer. Number two, avoid public Wi-Fi. Remember this sound? If you're too young to remember it, I envy you. Getting online used to be a difficult chore. Now, the internet is everywhere. The problem is that the free Wi-Fi you get in Starbucks is about as trustworthy as that free mattress you found on Craigslist. When you're on public Wi-Fi, even if it's password protected, anyone else sharing that public Wi-Fi can monitor what you're doing online. All he needs to do is run a piece of software that took my producer less than four minutes to find online. And he can monitor every website you visit and even what passwords you type in. So yeah, don't do your online banking at Starbucks. Stick to social media, you know, the stuff hackers already have access to. And finally, number one, destroy your computers. At this point, I wouldn't blame you if you turned off your browser and chucked your computer out the window. But for those of you still watching, what are you doing? Do you know how dangerous this is? Your computer's hard drive no doubt contains a lot of personal information about you. Even if you think you deleted your entire collection of My Little Pony fan art and emptied the trash or recycling bin, a scrappy data miner can still often find it buried in your hard drive. The only way to truly delete your old data is to physically destroy your hard drive which most people don't do, despite how fun that would be. Do you know what happens to your old computers? Chances are some of your electronic junk ends up here in China, the world's biggest dumping ground for electronic waste. But while many people know they're supposed to destroy their computer's hard drive, what you may not know is that your company's printer also contains a hard drive and has stored on it every single document it ever printed. If you're concerned about intellectual property theft, having your printer end up in a Chinese recycling plant might not be the best option. So what's the best thing to do with your old printer? So those are the seven ways you can protect yourself against hackers. Do you think you've been doing enough? Which of these tips will you adopt? Leave your comments below along with your name, social security number, and password. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Big money news out of China last week. China's central bank devalued its currency. Beijing's decision on Tuesday to slash its daily reference rate by 1.9% has triggered the yuan's biggest one-day loss against the dollar in more than two decades. That means one in every 15 Americans is now in this hacker's database, just from that one breach. But who could this mysterious hacker be? What countries are attacking the United States as we sit here in cyberspace? Well, I don't want to give you a complete list, uh, but I can tell you at the top of the list is the Chinese.